Welcome back to the FTTH conference here in uh, Stockholm and Stockholm's Messan. With me, me, with me now, I have uh, Anders Broberg, the head of communication at Stukab. And uh, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, fiber in the Nordics and FTTH in the Nordics, uh, which is a seminar where you were uh, participating in earlier today. Anders, yes. yep. were there any specific topics you were talking about? We've been talking a little bit about uh, FTTH in the Nordics a, a few times earlier here in the studio, but uh, not, we haven't heard what you spoke about at the seminar. No, uh, I'm coming from Stoke, as uh, you say, and, and it's the infra, uh, infrastructure company in Stockholm. Yeah. That's owned correct. by the Stockholm. So um, Nordic, it's a big uh, area, and, and we are focused on the Stockholm okay. area uh, with uh, all that challenge and so on. Uh, but uh, my uh, headline was really to, to that if you want to succeed with a broadband bare fiber rollout, it's very important that you separate a different level from each other. So uh, um, in our case, we are just providing the dark fiber, the passive infrastructure and nothing else. And then it's open from everywhere um, on equal terms. Okay. Because uh, we don't really think that will be, you will have such great rollout, competition and so on, innovation, if you are a traditional operator who have everything from the cable to the service. Is this anything you, should, you can do everywhere, you think? Or, or is this a specific thing you can do only in Stockholm? No, I don't think so. Uh, because if you look at other infrastructure, like the road, uh, the, the railway and so on, it's, it's quite natural that uh, it's separate from the service. <coughs> yeah. Uh, of a lot of reasons. And I, I, I have really... Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't I understand why... It's a lot of places where you think that, that you need to be, you know, have both the infrastructure and the service, and that's the only model. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I would say it it's, it's, uh, could definitely be uh, used everywhere. But then, of course, go from one situation to another situation, that could also be tricky, and, and you must uh, so take it from, from... So the easiest way is to begin with a structure like this? Yes, I, I would say that. Uh, I would say that because it's uh, infrastructure in this case is a long-term investment uh, and, and uh, uh, then you need to be long-term uh, and to be able to be, to be that is that you're not dealing with a lot of service who can, could be, uh, uh, the customer could like and then next year they don't like and so on. So, so it's better to have just a road and then it's up to, to everyone to, to use it. Then you'll be able to get your money, your income, and to spread out the network more and more and more, and then you get more and more customer and so on, and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, but are there many, many cities using this model, or are you alone in, in, a, no. in a market? Uh, Sweden have uh, 290 municipal, and yeah. in, you have city networks in uh, 180 of this, uh, but... Uh, then the, uh, the model could be a little bit different. Yeah, there's a big difference between. It's a huge yes, difference yes, between these yes. city uh, networks. Many of these city networks also have level two, as well lighting up yeah. the fiber and giving so. Uh, so. But common is that it will try to be as low as possible. Uh, it's just open uh, for everyone and so on. So, um, that, and, and also... Uh, if you compare with different cities in, in Sweden, Stockholm is extremely big comparing with others. So it's, it's, so, so it's uh, one. <laughs> You're often a, a case internationally. There are many international yes. countries and yes. cities and uh, stuff come to Sweden to, to visit and see you because yes. you have been very successful. Yes. Uh, well, I would say they come in for three things. Uh, the first thing is they are uh, like that we have created uh, so much competition. We have over 100 operators who are active and using our net for their business. We have a lot of over 700 total different customers who are also using it. Um, the second reason is that they are amazing that a public-owned company could run without tax money. Yeah. That seems uh, very uh, curious for, for a lot of people. Uh, but it's, it's not uh, really not any problem because we have 
Uh, it's very common that a city in, Stockholm, uh, in Sweden have companies who provide water, for example. And the water is not paid by the tax money, it's paid by the users who pay for the water. And it's the same here. The customer is paying to renting the fiber. And because we haven't built everything at once, we have built step by step. And we say but you, must, money. you must have started somewhere. Yes. You must have yes. got tax money somewhere in no. the beginning. No, to, to, to uh, create a, a company, it's cost uh, uh, 5,000 euro. And then it's the city, yes, they pay. Uh, but then we, day one, go to the bank and say, we want to, buy, uh, we want to have money, borrow money, because we're going to build uh, infrastructure, uh, fiber infrastructure. Uh, and the bank say, yes, it's okay, because two reasons. Uh, you're not buying so much money, because you're just building a <laughs> little bit to start yeah. with, and then it's no... So such a big risk. And the second, of course, when we have the, the city as the owner, uh, it's quite... Uh, it's a safe investment. Yeah, safe investment in that. And then we have, uh, we have building and we get customer, get revenue, cash flow and so on. And then it's, it's very easy to go to the bank and say, now we want to exp expand our network, we want to borrow some more. And I see our books and see it work well and then you can... Go on. So. Yeah, you have a quite good revenue today. You have today, yes, more than thirty percent, which you all invest all the money back in the company. Yes, uh, because uh, well, first of all, start, we started ninety four. Yeah, uh, so we have been twenty years now, and, and you, you, you're like back. in Ninety four was like back in the Stone Age. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when so it was, comes to broadband. Yes, yes, it was just in, in the as a consequence of the deregulation in, in the Swedish telecom market. Uh, so uh, we started in 94, 98, we have the first uh, benefit, <laughs> profit, uh, but it was first uh, 2008, we start earn more money than we have really spent. Okay. Uh, so yes, it's, it's really time and, and of course, uh, we have a lot of investment that we want to have <laughs> back <laughs> in that case. Yes, and, and the rules for, in Sweden for, for company, uh, for city's own companies, well, I say three main reasons. You must have some mission, in our case, provide uh, dark fiber in the area. Uh, you uh, must be quite close to the, uh, to the area, so you are not allowed to expand to other countries or uh, far away in the Sweden. So we'd be, be in the Stockholm region. And the third is that you're allowed to get much your profit you want uh, and, uh, and um, in, um, as long you, you take the profit back and invest in the, in the um, company. In, in, yeah. in, in, uh, so. But if you, when, when we have some time maybe stop invest and, and pay the, the loan, then we must uh, have lower price for our products. That's, That's interesting. That sounds yes. really good. Uh, so, so what are you investing in today? What, what, are, what are the... We have, well, we, from the beginning of 94 um, until 2007, 2008, it was mainly business to business. And then we have really focused the last year to uh, fiber to the home. Now we have connect 90% uh, of the build, uh, of how the buildings where 90% of the households is living. Yeah. Uh, and then it was quite heavy invest. But... I would say this is. A, I would say normally say this is three business in the same case. You have the households who is very slow to really order <laughs> and decide, but you also have a lot of small enterprise oh, yeah. who are quite quite quick, quickly to say, oh, we have fiber now. I want a really good broadband, and then you have all the mobile operators who need to spread out and net, build out the network, and yeah. they are quite good. So. Yeah, it's, uh, but you, you built out this network uh, on a chance, you can say, because you didn't have customers in, in all these apartments and houses and stuff like that. Yes, in which that you connected. case, yes. Yeah. Uh, do you see, see it exploding today or are we climbing slow uh, on the penetration mm, side? Well, yes and no. I, I would say we always uh, think that next year will not be so much fiber need, but it always be more and more demand from our customer on more and more fiber. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, and, uh, uh, so, so, and, and, and even if they, the end customer, for example, the household, don't need a fiber connection, they need uh, the operators who deliver broadband for, the, for them need fiber very close to the oh, buildings. Yeah. Uh, for example, the cable uh, company need fiber very, very close, and then it changed to the to the coax cable, yeah. cable, and so to be able so, so and and definitely it's going up, but uh, it's it's hard to see how quickly. No. <laughs> uh, and, and and so, um, but 
in my opinion, that everyone needs fiber connection sooner or later. Yeah. You, uh, you can't be out in the future. No. So we're having this event in Stockholm yes. this year. Uh, you were in London last year. Yes. If you compare the events. Oh, uh, well, of course, I'm proud it's in Stockholm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, well, well it's, it's, I think both uh, function very well. Uh, uh, for me, it's very interesting to walk around and, and listen to uh, different speakers and hear about trends and best practices and, and so on and to find to figure out what's going on. And, and, yeah. and I would say it's, it's was both really interesting in London and there's a lot of interesting uh, speakers here. So the But you're having your own event at Friday after the, yes. the, the conference is yes. over. Yes. Uh, how come you're having an event and uh, what will happen? Well, it's, 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 uh, uh, one reason is that we are 20 years <laughs> and celebrate, so we think it's a good idea uh, to have a seminar to share ideas instead of um, giving ice cream to the children. <laughs> um, and we will focus on, we have really interesting speakers from uh, New Zealand, the, the Singapore, the United States and here from Europe also. And, and try to see what happened in different parts of the world and what could we, as in Sweden and Europe, learn from each other to, uh, to find, try to be uh, even better to roll out fiber and, and uh, basic infrastructure you need to be a, a good society. Yeah, uh, lots of people coming. Yes, uh, today it's uh, in the morning. It was over 200. Uh, but uh, still, uh, still, yes. you're still counting. Yes, you're still counting, and we we think it's it's a good idea to have it for some people who's coming to this uh, conference could stay one more day and take this also. Yeah, uh, and uh, also some of the speakers who are really interesting to come when we can offer to go to this conference before. Yeah, yeah. And you were also, Stockholm was also very recently named as the Network Society City of the World or something like that? Uh, yes, uh, Ericsson have uh, it's a lot of different uh, uh, companies who make different uh, ranking and index and so on. And, and uh, this autumn in November, Ericsson present the most connected city and Stockholm would rank it number one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's very... Pleasure and, and honor I guess you are a yes. big part, or at least Stukab yes. is a very big part of that. Yes, uh, it's in fact, because the Ericsson says that it was the reason the, uh, the well-built-out fiber network, uh, the high use and well uh, 4G LTE network, and the use by you and me and another here uh, using ICT solutions and so on. Is Sweden really a good example of a fiber nation? Uh, well, yes and no. I would say uh, the cities are more good example. Uh, I say we would say the government here could do definitely more. Uh, they uh, have not done so much, I would say. In what way are you thinking then? I think, well, for the first, what they have done is to present a broadband strategy. 2009, it's a good step, uh, but uh, this broadband strategy, uh, well, I would say we should be good on broadband and nothing else, it's just, I would say, nice word. <laughs> of yeah. course, it has put a debate and forced everyone to do more, but now we really need uh, a broadband strategy 2. Uh, second version, new version, who is taking higher uh, de, uh, goals for this uh, to meet the future. That's one reason. The second reason, uh, I would say, they, they are, because uh, the government is the big owner of the incumbent Telia, uh, they uh, like more to have profit from, the, from Telia back in the, in the state's uh, cash flow than building out uh, fiber. So uh, they The government in Sweden could learn a lot of the, the cities in Sweden to promote and really um, expand or accelerate the rollout in, in, in Sweden. And a third, I would say, the, the Swedish parliament have some years ago also uh, say to the decision is that the government should come back with proposal uh, how they are going to split uh, Telia the infrastructure part from the service. But the government do nothing, just lazy. And when you ask them, they say, well, we have no hurry to, to, to go do that uh, parliament had decided. Do you know why it is like that? 
No, I don't know. But I think it's, it's quite easy to have a company who given a lot of profit back to the, to the state, to, uh, uh, to the state. So, and, then it's, and then it's always tricky to change, yeah. regardless what type of change you're doing. We're having a new election this autumn. Do you think that this, that could change the game? Well, uh, new election and new government, uh, regardless color, it's, it's always a new opportunity to, to take new questions and from a new wing, uh, angle and so on. But unfortunately, I would say this, it's, uh, this type of question is not anything that the voters really have... Uh, <laughs> Uh, on the top of the mind, uh, mm. so it's uh, so I am more hopeful that a lot of uh, the Swedish municipal are really discussing how we can have fiber rollout uh, to our citizens and to be able to deliver a lot of service uh, to the citizens more effective. Yeah. So we're reaching the end of the first day of the seminar. Yeah. Um, Are you looking forward to anything special for the rest of the day or tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm really looking for uh, one of the sessions where uh, Adi, Mr. Adi Granberg from Swedish Television is uh, talking about how they have developed TV production based on fiber and it's uh, reduced the cost with 40 percent and, and, and uh, a lot of other good things are really interesting to hear how they're working with that and how it works is, is going on. Okay. Thank you very much for coming, Anders. Thank uh, you. Okay. Pleasure to have you here. Yes. Good luck. And um, that means we are going on to our last speakers for today. Uh, as you can see behind us, there are lots of people out moving around, uh, looking at the, uh, uh, the show here. And uh, as you might know, you can also watch the whole seminar show at uh, streaming uh, at uh, fttheconference.eu. And now I welcome uh, Maria Hell, the CEO of uh, SUNET, the student network, I guess it is, here in Sweden. And Jorgen Sandström, uh, IT strategist mm. at SKL. Sounds, kind of, sounds good, yes. <laughs> So how do we translate SKL to, uh, to English? It's the Association for the Local and Regional Authorities. Yeah. Mm. Both of you have been in a panel about smart everything. Mm. Is Sweden a smart place to be? Well, I think so, yes. Uh, actually, SUNET stands for the Swedish University Networks. So that was actually mainly what I was talking about. Um, The need of the dark fiber for us actually establishing our network between the universities and the research projects and so on. So that was actually my main thing, which is actually kind of a base condition for, for everything else that will happen. That, for instance, Jürgen was talking about all the smart things that need need to happen is, well, that, that will happen needs, needs to infrastructure. Yeah. So that was my, my kind of my uh, contribution to the dialogue, to the debate. Mm. And dark fiber is also something you are keen to talk about, Jorgen. Uh, of course, uh, it's a, it's a new infrastructure infrastructure in the society. Um, it is like the, our new roads and our new um, airports and and so on. So so we need it to to develop to reach the goals for growth and jobs in the society. But we also have to fill it with with good public services. Uh, Uh, at this, uh, in the same rate that that we are, uh, can we see that the uh, market is filling it with with uh, new media services for television and and uh, and the other stuff, so, so other useful stuff that everybody uses today. Yeah. Since I know both of you are working quite much with uh, dark fiber, mm. uh, could you please explain to to me and to the viewers what well, what's so good with the dark fiber compared to uh, to wavelength fiber? Mm. Well, actually, sorry, do you want to? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Men's first, I was going to say, but no. Okay, anyway. Uh, no, but, uh, the, well, every level in the value chain has its own policy and needs its own policy, and it's necessary for certain things. So if you go deep down in the value chain, you have the dark fiber, uh, and for that you can put on optical equipment or hardware to make wavelengths and then you can above the wavelengths you can make IP hardware to make internet or IP connections yeah. and of course 
the, the lower you get, of course, the more own equipment can you do and your own solutions. And for instance, our research projects in Sweden, well, sometimes they need just plainly an internet connection and we provide that, of course, but sometimes they need just to transport raw data. And then, of course, they need to have uh, what do you say, con communication at a, at, at a very low level in the value chain. And for that, we need a dark fiber and we need our own equipment for doing that. Yeah. But for the other solutions, okay, that might be necessary or, or interesting or, or relevant to have like transmission solutions for, for mm. other purposes or even IP connectivity to, to other operators. But that depends on what you're doing. And the stuff that we're doing needs a, a, a diversity of different solutions. So we need a dark fiber for doing that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Jürgen? Mm, I think that, that my point of view is the citizens, the businesses and the public sector's needs all around the country, uh, in every house, in every uh, bush almost. Uh, they, they have different... They have needs to develop. They have needs for their daily life. They have a lot of, of needs. And, and we have to see that, that we have a future-proof infrastructure for, for that, to provide those services uh, that we will have and will need for the future. And, and so for me, it's, it's, it's basically about getting an infrastructure out there so it can be used to, to get uh, better services, to enhance competition, to be a part of, of developing the growth and the jobs and the attracti attractivity that the, these uh, municipalities, the, these cities need. Uh, for, for the daily, daily life. And I, I, I think if, if you deliver that uh, on wavelength or, or dark fiber, that, could, that is a question of semantics for me, basically, because it's about what, what, what can, how can we do it uh, right there and right now. And, and if we have a situation like in Stockholm, then dark fiber is the perfect solution probably for that. And, and I can see that is, can be used much more than it is today. But uh, we know that wavelength is some kind of, of middle thing, about how, how, to, how to use the infrastructure even better. And, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see where it ends up. We talk a lot about the Swedish infrastructure. We have a fantastic infrastructure here when it comes to fiber and when it mm. comes to broadband. But services, mm. uh, are we as good on services as we are on, on building networks in mm. Sweden? Well, uh, well, I, well, some I think of us are. Some of us are, yeah. and uh, a lot yeah. of universities yes. are quite good in, yes. in, uh, in demanding high exactly. speed it's, it's, it's services. Exactly, it's a good like driver. It's a good mm. driver from the research uh, sector and from the, uh, from the student the, the universities. That's a very, very good driver, and it's well, that is the way it started in the beginning of the eighties, actually. Okay. So Unity is like over 30 years old so so it's been it's, it was and it's still a big driver actually yeah. a good driver for, for, for solutions and, uh, and I, uh, as I understand over 30% of the kids are looking at the children's channel on, uh, on internet instead of going to the television so they have already yeah. adopted the new technology and think that the, the iPads or whatever is, is probably a better choice than, than, mm -hmm. uh, than looking at it the old way so, so the, stu the students and the kids they are the best on, uh, on using services I think that if you give them something, they use it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, yeah. there are no boundaries there. So, so what about services for elderly people? I mean, mm -hmm. as old as over 25. Yeah. Okay. When you ended up studying. And uh, well, yeah. <laughs> but I think that the, 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 the newly retired, if we see a, the, the, a rather large group today that has quite a good situation, quite good, quite a lot, a lot of money. They want to travel a lot. They want to have some some good time on the re when when they're newly retired. They actually use a lot of, of uh, internet for for both looking at uh, media services, uh, ordering uh, their the, the travels. Yeah. And they, they do a lot of stuff. They are actually quite quite uh, digitalized today. Mm -hmm. So I think that that uh, in different groups you can see it quite widely <coughs> when, when it comes to e-learning and e-health, that's two mm. trends uh, really coming up on the agenda internationally yeah. now. Uh, are we good in Sweden or are we bad? I think well. we have good research in Sweden. I, yes. I think we have a lot of interesting projects, but I can't see it uh, on a daily basis. I think that the public sector is actually um, quite bad on, on 
yeah, that's taking true. advantage of the of the the new technology and, yeah, and the adopting it, adopting, adopting it, yeah, yes. exactly, and and also mm. using or being better procurer, actually, I would like to say, mm. because it's in many senses, it's in many cases, I'm sorry, it has to do with being a good procurer. So you can kind of get the good solutions with good standardizations, mm. with good standards and secure solutions. And I don't think, according to what I've seen during my 10 years at the government and also before working mm. for the municipalities, yeah. uh, they could be better procurer, actually. And, and, mm. and um, that, would, that would probably probably solve a lot of solutions, solve a lot of problems. But I would like to combine the discussion about having more services and, and uh, on the network and also the, the development on the, on the network itself. I think I lack one area, which I, I tried to raise it now when I had my, mm. my speech in the session. And that's actually, it's like saying we need more roads. And everybody, okay, we need more roads. We need more optical fiber. But if the roads were owned by certain different companies, mm. I mean, for instance, if you have tel telemedicine, uh, services coming to your home via the fiber to the home. But what if that fiber is not ex accessible for, for the service for the, some some kind of operator mm -hmm. that would actually uh, ser serve the service, yes. provide the service? Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean. I mean, we have to kind of include the openness of the fiber in the discussion. Not only that we need more fiber because that is completely, everybody, I think, agree, agrees yeah, yeah. on that one. That is not an issue any longer. <laughs> no, no, exactly. No, it's, of course, you can talk about the investments, who is mm. going to invest, and how would we solve blah, 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 mm. okay. these kind of things. But how do we make it open so it's really accessible? So it's, it's like roads yeah. and railroads. And, mm. and even though we are doing this optical fiber you know, development mm. for so many years, we don't dare to touch that elephant in the room. How do mm. we make this fiber open accessible? I think how that's do we the do problem. It? Do you have a solution? Mm. I told at the session you weren't uh, there. <laughs> no, yeah, I weren't no. there. I have my no, but I think we need to be a bit more open to, to regulation, like having optical, the dark optical fiber mm. uh, as a wholesale product in the whole Europe. And I know that's going to cause a lot of uh, discussions and people go, oh, nobody's going to invest in that. Anyway. I don't think so, actually. I don't think so. Because we did the copper, the, the, the copper regulation, the, mm. the local loop regulation, bits in regulation, and that was quite successful, I have to mm. say. So we have to try to, we, we need to, to tackle this uh, optical fiber maybe in the, in, in the same way. It's also an infrastructure. Yeah. So it's, I know it's tricky, but I think some kind of regulation would be in place. Mm. You're and on I, Maria's side, Jürgen? No, I don't think so. <laughs> we, we don't think that we can re regulate uh, success, uh, especially when it's an infrastructure where we have about 80% left to build. With the copper, it was yeah. different because 100% of it was built, and, and here we have to promote, uh, actually promote investments and yeah. so on. But I think you have right in one way that we have to talk about this uh, asset sharing and how to, yeah. actually, uh, how to actually use the infrastructure that is put in place and can be used and and also talk about this openness and and the, not least net neutral yeah. neutrality and and give uh, good frames for how to to develop this in the future so 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 it doesn't feel like a big risk to invest in this. Should, should, we, no. wait, should we wait for 10 or 20 years before we uh, open up the networks for everyone and open up with uh, net neutrality? I think you can open it up yeah. anyway. And, yeah. and, and uh, for instance, if, if we have uh, publicly owned uh, networks in some extent so that the market feel, feels forced to open uh, their own networks to be part of it. it, it it's yeah. one way of doing it as well. Yeah, and yeah. I think we can actually see that situation in yeah. Sweden where, where uh, a lot of publicly owned fiber actually uh, guarantees that e even the monopolists, uh, the incumbent, uh, have to talk about it, have it as a business model with, with, with openness. But I realize that this could be a tricky thing for yeah. other countries in Europe, and we have to help them, of course. Yeah, and, I think and, so too. And uh, and regulation is like is like uh, it's not the best word for me. I don't think that you can regulate success, but no. but still, uh, I understand that we have to have some kind of, of guidelines that promotes 
exactly, exactly what you... I agree with you. So your yeah. goal, I think, <laughs> we agree on, but maybe yeah. the methods could be yeah, different. Okay. So. Yeah, okay. Well, actually, I, you know, I, st I stopped working for the government a yeah. year ago, so I feel yeah. I don't have to be pol so political correct anymore. <laughs> you know, I don't have a political leadership as you have. Yeah, well, actually, I do have that. Yeah, okay. But yes. anyway, but it's far away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but I agree with you. I mean, mm. in regulation is kind of the last tool you have to... There are many, many, many other tools you can actually... There's the softer tools, mm. so like stimulating mm. and having strategies, yeah. talk about it, yeah. kind of have a, have a goal that you want to have the mm. optical fiber as a wholesale product and mm. kind of make that, that you know, true. And then, then it might, might happen yeah. in, in other ways because of... Yeah. Of, uh, it's just happening. It's, it's when you talk about the thing enough times, it suddenly comes true. And, and I think what you're saying also having other, you know, publicly owned networks as a competitor mm. that are all that have open networks. Of mm. course, they force the other networks to, to open up yeah. themselves. So I mean, there are many tools, but we need to talk about this and mm. we need That's to have this strategy. And we don't right now, actually. Uh, yeah, we're, we're actually falling back to an infrastructure dis discussion, but we were here to talk about smart everything. Mm. So, uh, yeah, but I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's irritating. I think it's, 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 it's the atmosphere. <laughs> around around. Yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah. But look, at, look around you. You yeah. see optical fibers all over the place, yeah. actually. At yeah. the seminar. Was it the same way at the seminar where you were? Park. No, I, no, I don't think no, so. I don't think so, no. no. Were think there we're any good smart everything cases? Mm. Well, you were talking about many things, I think, mm. in your speech. I, I, I think that, that the public sector have to step up and deliver more good services that actually take this, this opportunity that we have with the, with the infrastructure in use more and better. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of things is happening. For instance, this, the, the development in, in the Swedish schools are incredible when you see to the amount of computers and wireless uh, zones they have and, and all the fiber that you have to have to, to give the them the, the, this possibility and uh, so there, there are a lot of, of things going on actually uh, but it's not happening as fast as it should and uh, we can do even more to, to provide uh, better services for the citizens and, and they actually ask for it because now they are so used to using it in so many other areas yeah. uh, that they think that why, why should it have why can't I get a building permit right here right now because it's what's the problem about <laughs> yeah. giving me a, a building permit right here, yeah. right now? And we have something about you know agencies and law and so. But it's that basically it's not true because it's about just to to to, to have the information you need and, and process it and see can I build or can I not build? Yeah. And and that is basically how easy it is. But we have to cooperate a lot more. We have to to talk with each other much yeah. more. We have to realize that, that it, this is about the daily life, life of people and not about my silo where I have a responsibility just to look on this. I have to look on myself and say, what role do I have in, in the society's future or in, the, in, or in this, or in the mm. people's daily life. Yeah. So. so what we come back to is, if we're gonna have a smart everything life, mm. we need the infrastructure on place. Mm. We have yeah. to trust the infrastructure as well. Yeah, exactly. And that exactly. Was, was also a topic during our session that where, where we, 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 it must be resilient, it must be robust, it must work. Yeah. Because exactly. if, if we trust it with our lives, mm -hmm. it can't go down every time the, the lights go out. No. No. It has to work. You no, know. That's true. Mm. Yeah. So, that is so I guess you've been busy the whole day today and mm -hmm. you're looking forward to have a peaceful day tomorrow or maybe later today. <laughs> Is it anything special you're out watching for uh, for the rest of the FTTH conference? Well, uh, I, yeah. For me it's an opportunity to meet up with a lot of people that I don't meet so often and talk about their yeah, their issues, basically. Yeah. So it's uh, yes, and it'll be the same same for me actually to to, mm. to meet a lot of people I haven't met for a long time because I was more in the broadband sector before and then I worked for the government. Mm. So now I'm coming back in the in the sector again. So it's more like reconnecting with a, with a bunch of people. That's 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 really nice. I so think. networking is a very important part mm. of this. Networking is yes. very event important for you think. always yeah. on any so layer. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's on the fiber level or on the human level. Exactly. No, yeah. it's the same that's, networking. Yeah, so. Pleasure to have you here, both of you. Yeah, thank you very really much. Yeah, thank you very appreciate much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very thank much. You very much. So, thank you. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> we are uh, ending up this day's show from uh, our little studio here at the floor of FTTH conference. 
at Stockholm's Messan. It's fantastic to just walk around and feel the atmosphere of more than 3,000 delegates from 84 countries. It's so fantastic. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow at uh, 11.10 uh, on the first uh, coffee break here at this event. And until then, thank you for watching.